Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are back at it with managing the score manager. I thought I'd throw an, a video in here about the instrument change function. Um, I was thinking originally that uh, I would create a whole series for this, but actually the instrument change function in Finale is very simple, and it's somewhat related to the score manager anyway, so I thought I'd just throw this one video in here uh, because I know this is something that a lot of you would want to use, so uh, let's get to it. So changing instruments in Finale is actually very, very simple, and that's thanks to an option that they added, I want to say in 2010 or 2012 version, somewhere around there, they added this option at the end of the Utilities menu called Change Instruments. And this really, really, really simplified the whole process. Before this w existed, it was a whole mess of using staff styles and everything, and it, it, was just a, it was just not fun. But the Change Instrument feature is really simple. So what I've done here is I've selected one measure in the flute, and I go to Change Instrument, and I get a dialog box that's very similar to this, uh, I, b I believe the score um, wizard uh, looks something like this, and you can just find your category and then find the instrument you need. In this case, I'm going to choose the clarinet and B-flat to change to, and click OK, and you'll see what happens is that the, uh, the key will change for the clarinet because obviously there's a transposition change, so now we know we're in clarinet. And also what will happen is the staff label will change on the uh, second system when the uh, B-flat clarinet takes over the entire system there. What you won't get, however, is you know change to uh, clarinet and clarinet labels here. Those you still have to do uh, with expressions uh, in Finale. So th that process is not automated yet in the change instrument function. Now what I did here was uh, select one measure and use the change instrument function. And what this does in Finale is it will change the instrument from this measure all the way to the end of the piece. So if I were to scroll all the way to the end, the uh, last system would still be showing B-flat clarinet. Uh, if you select more than one measure, it, it actually just can, can be just two or three or four, however many measures you want, um, that doesn't go to the end, and do the same thing, change instrument, clarinet, and B-flat, what it will do is change the instrument for those selected measures and then go back to the original instrument after that point. So there's a slight difference between selecting a single measure and selecting multiple measures with the change instruments. Incidentally, uh, don't judge me, I would never actually write an instrument change this fast. You don't want to have an instrument change within an eighth note like this, but I'm just doing this for uh, purposes of uh, demonstration, <laughs> but uh, I would never actually do this. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, clefs. So let's look at this clarinet in B flat 2 part right here, and just for the fun, I'm going to transpose these two measures uh, down a couple of octaves, and we're going to change this instrument from clarinet in B flat to Barry sax. Uh, the baritone sax will have both a key change and a clef change, so I'm going to select baritone sax and click OK. And what you'll see is the key change, right? So now we're in uh, the key of F for the Barry sax as opposed to B flat for the clarinet. Um, you don't see the clef change, obviously, because what we're looking at is the uh, transposed score. If I were to go to the uh, concert pitch score, you'll see the clef change, but not the key change, obviously, because now we're all in one key. But the clef uh, in concert key will show you the appropriate bass clef there. So uh, Finale will handle both the, the, the clef and key changes for you. Now one thing you may notice is that when I switch to the transpose score, uh, what Finale is doing is putting double bars before these key changes. Well, that is because of an option in the document options in the bar line section where it says double bar line before key changes. Now this is a nice feature because what it does, it automatically puts a double bar before a key change. However, I do think that there is a missing option here that would, would allow you to disregard key changes for instrument changes only, because I don't believe that a double bar line should go before a key change if it's solely for an instrument change. And you can see that it kind of creates a little bit of a mess in my score here. I mean, obviously I wouldn't change instruments this quickly anyway, but uh, it does create some double bar lines where there really should not be one. So for me, I always leave this option unchecked. And when I do that, it will get rid of those uh, nasty double bars before those instrument key changes. However, that does mean that if I have an actual key change in the song, like I do on page two here, I do have to manually add these, bar these double bar lines uh, to get that effect. So uh, it is a sort of missed opportunity that uh, Finale did not add that uh, sub option there, but um, it is what it is for now, and that's, that's how to deal with it. 
The other thing that Finale will do automatically for you is handle the sounds. And uh, I'm going to open the score manager because I said that the instrument change is somewhat related to the score manager. And as we know, you, you'll see the sounds that exist for each of these instruments on the right hand side. And in this particular case, I've changed two things. I've changed the flute here to go to clarinet, and I've changed the, the clarinet here to go to barry sax. But you notice you don't see anything about the, the clarinets underneath the flute or the barry sax under the clarinet. Um, if you open these triangles under that instrument, though, so I've got the flute selected here and open that triangle, what Finale will do is actually add an instrument for you in within the, the context or within the confines of that first instrument. So now you can see there's actually a clarinet in B flat here, and then right below it, it goes back to flute one, right? Uh, so it's actually sort of adding um, both of these instruments to the score manager. And additionally, you'll see that the sound has changed, and also the uh, channel and the, uh, or the bank and the channel has changed, so that um, it, will, it will essentially fill in, an, uh, it will add a new sound to the aria player, essentially. Um, the other thing that it will do is there is a column here. It's a little bit hard to see. I can't quite get this window wide enough. Um, but the uh, this co this column here that says st dot dot dot, uh, what that actually is is the uh, where is it uh, start measure. Uh, I, you see, I have that check. If I uncheck that, that column goes away. Uh, this start measure will tell you where this instrument starts, and this is specific to the instrument change function, so that you can see here, uh, I've got this clarinet selected, and you'll see that it's starting at measure 3, and then the flute 1 right below that is starting at measure 5. Most of the other instruments, are all, or all of the other instruments, are starting at measure 1. If we close this, then we lose the, the ability to see those two things. And again, the clarinet in B-flat 2, where I put that Barry sax, you'll see the Barry sax here. And uh, starting measure 3, starting measure for the going back to the clarinet is, is bar 5. Now, you have pretty much the same type of control that you would normally have uh, for the main instruments, including volume, pan, you can change the sounds, all this other stuff that you have access to. The one thing that you do not have access to with these extra instruments is the layers. Unfortunately, you can't actually open up another triangle to get the you know, the layers for the Barry sax to, uh, to appear. So uh, that is one slight limitation to how Finale handles uh, instrument changes in the score manager. And I also mentioned that it will indeed add uh, instruments in the, uh, uh, in the ARIA player. So I've just opened my audio units banks and effect window and uh, my instruments got added to bank two because I have more than 16 instruments. And you see that um, I had 17 instruments here and this last one was the fusion drum kit. And uh, when I made those instrument changes, it added the clarinet and it added the Barry sax for me. Otherwise, these normally would have said empty. There's a couple other things to keep in mind with the instrument change function. Um, if you have instruments that are set to not show a key signature but show accidental, like I've set my uh, horns up here, you can see that there's no key signature here, and you change to an instrument that does use accidentals, um, what you will get, if I do this, change instrument, let's change to trumpet, what you'll get is the key signature to appear for the uh, trumpet part here, and then uh, the, the key signature will get canceled out uh, when we go back to the horn in F1. So uh, you can indeed go back and forth between uh, non-keyed instruments and keyed instruments. You can also change from uh, non-pitched percussion to pitched percussion. So if you see I've got this percussion line here, and uh, what I can do is change an instrument, let's say we're going to change to a pitch percussion part, uh, glockenspiel. And when you do that, it will uh, handily add the key signature for you. Now, the one uh, bummer about this is that it will also add the cancellation key here, which I think, uh, for my taste, looks a little strange for a non-pitch percussion to, to all of a sudden see that uh, key cancellation. So um, there are a couple things that we could do to fix this. The first is that if you really want to, and this is a somewhat of a standard, is that you don't actually have to display the key signature for the pitched percussion part. If we go into the score manager and choose percussion and open up that triangle to give us access to that glockenspiel, um, we can actually use this option here, hide key signature and show accidentals. Uh, and what that will do, oh, if I had a, some music in there, let's put some music in there. 
uh, what that will do is actually show all of the accidentals, which is actually not a terrible way to write uh, pitch percussion parts, but uh, you know you, you have the option of doing it either way. Let's go back and uh, change that back so that we're showing a key signature now. And again, you see the problem with the cancellation key, uh, if you consider that a problem. Uh, really, the best way to deal with this is that if this is what you want to see without this uh, cancellation key here, is to create a staff style. And I'll do that real quick for you. What I'm going to do is define a new staff style, new, call it no key, copyable. And uh, what we want to do is where it says items to display, make sure that key signature is uh, blank and not a minus or a check sign, which will uh, tell Finale to uh, definitely hide the key signature. And click OK, and then just apply it to this one um, uh, measure is fine, no key. And now you'll see that the uh, cancellation key will go away. All right. The other thing that's perfectly possible is that you can change from uh, one staff or one line instruments like this triangle part here to uh, multi-line instruments. So once again, let's use a change instrument function with those two measures in the triangle selected. And you know what? Why don't we go to Glockenspiel again for the triangle? And you'll see that uh, it will actually go from uh, one line staff into the five line staff, again, adding the key signature and then the cancellation key. And again, if you want, you can just um, uh, uh, apply that staff style to this one measure, no key, there we go. And that fixes that. So it is possible to go from one staff to five line staff or vice versa. Uh, I think you can actually go between five line staffs and, and tab staffs if you want as well. Uh, so there's a lot of different options uh, with that. There are a few limitations with the change instrument uh, function. For example, you can only change um, uh, one instrument at a time. So if I were to try and let's see if I can choose, uh, let's see my trumpets here. If I were to try and choose uh, both of these trumpet lines and let's say we're going to change that instrument to, we're just going to make this trumpet in C. Um, what you'll see is that we'll only change the top one. So you can't actually change multiple instruments at the same time. You can only do one at a time. And the other thing you can do, you cannot do is you cannot change mid measure. So if I try and select a partial measure there, change instrument to trumpet and C, what it's going to do is actually change from the beginning of the measure. So that's a limitation as well. Um, it's not that uh, critical in instruments. I, I have run into a little bit of a problem with that. Sometimes with percussion parts, there may be a, a rare case where you might want to change an instrument from beat, you know, you, you end on beat one and then on beat four you have a new instrument. So uh, you do have to manage some workarounds with that. And then finally, the last limitation is that you can't actually change uh, instruments that go from one staff to two staffs or vice versa. So in my piano part here, which is a grand staff, I couldn't actually, you know, select one measure um, and go to change instruments. And what you'll see is that it will not even give me the option to uh, select a one staff instrument. In fact, there are two woodwind instruments that I guess is a wind section and whatever the organ netto is, uh, which must be a two line staff. So there's no, you can't actually choose a one staff instrument. And let's say I were to choose the accordion in this situation. What it's going to do is actually, well, you're not going to see it, but it's actually going to change the um, uh, the accordion for for both staffs, or it's going to change the instrument for both staffs simultaneously. Um, so that is another limitation. And same thing with one line instruments. If I were to try and go to uh, change instrument and try and find a piano, you won't find it. The only thing you will find in the keyboard section is some of these uh, one staff keyboard sounds. So uh, like the theremin and the melodica, which are would be a one staff instrument. So again, you can't actually switch between a one staff instrument and a two staff instrument or vice versa. If you need to, I understand it's, it's possible you might need to. For example, you might have a percussionist that's playing a lot of one line uh, unpitched percussion and he switches to a two staff marimba part or something. Um, the workarounds for that actually involve adding an extra instrument in the score, hiding it when hiding the stabs when necessary, adding both instruments to the part and then hiding the instruments when they don't appear in the part, etc. It is a, it is a bit of a, a pain in the neck, but uh, uh, that's really the only way to do that um, going from a one staff to two staff instrument uh, in that manner. 
Um, and I think I covered it. Th that's pretty much all you need to know about changing instruments. There really is nothing more to it than that. Again, Finale makes it really easy. There's a, a couple little bugaboos about it and a couple little uh, limitations, but really af beyond that, it's, it's really quite simple. So uh, I hope this has helped, and um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon on the next video.